video. On this one here, we're looking at the formation of urine. So let's look first of all at the aim. Now the aim of this is to be able to describe and explain production of urine with reference to the processes as ultrafiltration and also selective reabsorption. Let's just recap first of all what we've seen in the previous video. Now we looked at um, a kidney tubule or nephron. We described briefly what happens in various stages. So look first of all here, this top here, this is your proximal convoluted tubule here. Okay, And here, fluid is altered by reabsorption of all the sugars, most salts and some water. So about 85% of the fluid is reabsorbed at this point here. We then go into the descending limb of the loop of Henle. That's this section here, isn't it? Okay, and here water potential of the fluid is decreased by addition of salts and removal of water. Then we come into the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, which is this. Oops, lost a little pointer there, which is this section here. There we go, not very tidy, but there we go. Now here, water potential is increased as salts are removed by active transport, so energy demanding section here. And the last bit we talked about was the collecting duct, which is this bit over here. Now the collecting duct, okay, water potential decreased again by removal of water. Now this ensures that the final product, the urine, has a low water potential. You don't want to be excreting more water than you need to. Therefore, urine has a higher concentration of solutes than blood and tissue fluid. Right, now, in this section, we're going to be really, really focusing on, up here, Bowman's capsule. Let's go to the next slide, shall we? Now, here's Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus in structure. You've seen this before. Now, what we've got here, this here, this is a magnified view of this area here. So, what we're looking at here is a magnified view of this bit of the membrane just here. Okay, so bear that in mind. Let's look now at some of the features of this. First of all, look at the diameter. And this is what's called the afferent arteriole. Now, the afferent arteriole is very wide compared to this bit here. Now, what that means is that you're going to build up pressure. Imagine loads and loads of people rushing down a corridor, and some of the corridor gets narrower. Now, there's going to be an increased pressure. Now, that increased pressure is really important. So, in here, you get increased pressure in the glomerulus. And the effect of that is the pressure is higher in the glomerulus than in Bowman's capsule. So pressure is higher here than here, so fluid is pushed in this direction from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. So the high pressure caused by the difference of diameter here is really, really important. Now here's that magnified view I talked about of the membrane. Okay. Now the barrier between capillary blood and the lumen of Bowman's capsule is made up of three quite distinct layers. The first layer is called the endothelium of the capillaries. That's this part here. Okay. Now you see these narrow gaps. There are narrow gaps here. Okay. On there, between the cells through which blood plasma and dissolved substances can pass through. We then got this basement membrane. Here's your basement membrane coming along here. Now this is a fine mesh of collagen fibers and glycoproteins, and this really is a filter. What it does, it filters um, what's passing from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. Sorry, that's the wrong way. There it goes right. There we go. Like that. There we go. So this filters it, and this prevents the passage of large molecules with molecular weights in excess of 69,000. So talking here about, you know, we can't allow through any red blood cells and also larger proteins. The third part are the podocytes. Now these are the epithelial cells here, epithelium there, okay, of Bowman's capsule. Podo, they're finger-like projections. And what they do, they're called major processes and then short gaps in the cells. You can see how, how the filter stuff is passing between the gaps here. There we go, rushing down there. Now, most of the ultrafiltration involves the basement membrane. So this bit here, this bit here is where most of the filtration occurs. Other layers do little to filter out larger molecules. Now this is what happens when the blood is filtered. So here we're going from the glomerulus here into Bowman's capsule. Okay, hence the arrow we showing. Going from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. What happens to the um, concentrations? Well look, all of the water as it goes through gets filtered. All water is filtered out of the blood into Bowman's capsule. Proteins, not a lot. 0 0.005, so this is only the very smallest proteins with molecular weights less than 69,000. All amino acids get filtered through, all the glucose, 
all the urea and all inorganic ions. Now a lot of this stuff is what we might actually need. Therefore there's been a lot of reabsorption, isn't there? But just to explain, blood cells and large proteins are left in the capillary. The very low water potential is important in ensuring reabsorption of water at a later stage. So when your blood leaves via the efferent arteriole, it's got very low water potential, which means it can readily absorb stuff at a later stage inside the kidney. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, staggering figure here, the total volume of fluid filtered out of the blood by both kidneys is about 125 cubic centimetres per minute. This represents about 180 litres a day. Now imagine if nothing was reabsorbed, you'd spend your whole day on going to the toilet, wouldn't you? So, so much of this stuff has to be reabsorbed. Let's look now where this happens. Now we said before, 85% of the filtrate is reabsorbed in this area here called the PCT, or proximal convoluted tubule. All glucose, amino acids, and some salts are reabsorbed in this area here along with some of the water. Okay, so we're getting the stuff back here. Let's look in more detail now at the wall of the PCT. Now make sure now you understand what we're looking at. We're looking at a cross section of say this bit here. This bit this bit represents the wall of the PCT. This is the, the um the fluid filled space inside the PCT, the lumen, and over here we've got the capillary. Okay, so anything that's just reabsorbed is going to go in this direction here. So make sure you've got your bearings here. Okay, let's have some. Oh no, let's have some labels, shall we? Now, this is the lumen of your PCT. Lumen is a fluid filled space inside your PCT. This is where all your um, filtered stuff is currently passing. Water, glucose, but nice, it's all going down here. Now this bit here represents, this bit, okay, is the wall of your PCT. This bit is the wall of the PCT. In there you've got nucleus, you've got mitochondria. This then is your capillary. Over here is your capillary. You can see you've got the endothelium here of your capillary and you've got the lumen of your capillary, the blood plasma with red blood cells. So make sure you can clearly make out what's what in this situation. Right, let's look now at the process involved, shall we? First thing feature is this thing here. Now this is the inner wall of the um, PCT. This is the inner wall here, the PCT, and notice how folded it is. It says here, highly folded microvilli, and what they will do, as always with villi, they increase the surface area for reabsorption. So very, very important. We've also got a code called co-transporter proteins, and they transport glucose and amino acids. There we go. So these things here are being transported by co-transporter proteins, okay, along with sodium ions. There's some ions. Oh, God, I missed out on there. Okay, from the tube into the cell. And this is called facilitated diffusion. Now, a couple of terms here. Let's just think about these two terms: co-transporter and facilitated diffusion. Now, a co-transporter protein. What they do allow facilitated facil can't even say it facilitated diffusion of simple ions to be accompanied by the transport of larger molecules such as glucose. So simple ions are being transported across, and in addition, you get transport of amino acids and glucose. Then we've got facilitated diffusion. Now this is diffusion enhanced by action of proteins in the cell membrane. So here you've got proteins that actually help move stuff across the membrane from the lumen into the wall of the PCT. So it's two key terms. Make sure you understand the terms code transporter proteins and also facilitated diffusion. Not sure, go back, have a look and really ensure please understand it. Now over here again we've got folding of the membrane. Again we've got these microvilli here. So membranes folded to increase surface area. Now this area also includes what we call a sodium potassium pump. And what that does, it pumps sodium out and it pumps pot potassium in. So sodium is going to leave and potassium is going to come in. That's really important. We'll see it in just a moment. Now sodium potassium pumps are special proteins in the cells of the membrane that actively transport sodium potassium ions against their concentration gradients. Now if you are getting transport 
against concentration gradients you can guarantee you're going to need lots and lots of energy and therefore you've got loads and loads of mitochondria so mitochondria are present what these do these provide energy from ATP to um, energize this sodium and potassium pump let's see now the various stages now first of all sodium ions are actively transported out of the cell into tissue fluid so you're getting energy being used to pump the sodium out of the PCT into the tissue fluid okay in tissue fluid sodium being pumped out now what that means is you have got lower sodium concentration here that's very useful now because then glucose or amino acids enter cells with the sodium ions because there's now a lower sodium concentration here sodium ions okay diffused in there, facilitated diffusion number, okay, along with glucose or amino acids. So here there's a lower concentration of glucose and amino acids. Now as they diffuse in, builds up the concentration of glucose and amino acids. It's higher here than it's here. So glucose and amino acids diffuse into the blood capillary as you'd expect. There's a higher concentration here. You'd expect it diffuse this way into the blood capillary. Okay, so there's our glucose and amino acids. So salts, glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed reducing the water potential in the cell. This therefore has a low water potential and surprise surprise because this has a low water potential water is going to move into this area here. Okay? This increases the water potential in tubule fluid so it enters the cells then is reabsorbed back into the blood by diffusion. Okay? There's going to be a higher concentration of water here now. So I'm not supposed to be underneath that, is it? Okay. So high water concentration here than it's here. So water will pass from this area here into there by diffusion. Large molecules, e.g., the smaller proteins with molecular weights less than 69,000, are reabsorbed into the blood by endocytosis. Remember the process of endocytosis? Well, if you don't, look it up and just reinforce your memory, okay? Right, and there we have it. So, in this video, we've described and explained production of urine with reference to processes of ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. Now, in this video, we're really, really focused on the um, what's happening in the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule, and also in the PCT. And in the subsequent video, we'll look at what happens in the rest of the kidney. Okay. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and goodbye for now. Thank you.